This is Dr. L, and this is how to set up the yeast um, sugar metabolism experiment. Really simple experiment, but there's like a lot of powerful connections to be made here with learning about both fermentation and aerobic respiration. So it's really worth doing. And it's a way that you can get data to learn how to do chi-squared analysis and get a lot of practice doing things in the wet lab. So the first thing that we're gonna do is activate dried dehydrated yeast. So we have dried dehydrated yeast in a tube. And this is Fleshman's Active brand from the grocery store. And so we've got um, 12 mils worth. I didn't weigh it, but it's like a couple of uh, heaping tablespoonfuls. We take that, it's standardized by mils, okay? And we pour it into a 100 and, or no, it's a 250 mil beaker. And then we're gonna activate it. We're using buffer that's pH five, slightly acidic. Like most fungi, um, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, which is this bread yeast, likes to be a little bit acidic. And so you, you can use water for this, but um, I've got buffer pH 5 and it just works really well and the yeast really like it. So uh, this is activating this is kind of bucket chemistry, so I don't even have to measure it precisely. I can use the lined gradients on the beaker and just pour up to the 100 ml line. And this buffer was preheated to 40 degrees Celsius, which is a few degrees warmer than a human body. And what I do is I just give it a really good mix with this glass stir stick. You could do this in your kitchen with a bowl and a teaspoon or anything else for mixing. And then I set this culture aside and I'm gonna let it let the um, cells rehydrate and they'll start metabolizing using their inner stores of glycogen. So you'll see some bubbling and some frothing in there that'll tell you that the yeast are alive. While I'm waiting for them to activate, I've, I will take my rack of 12 test tubes and my test tubes are the simple disposable glass kind, 16 millimeter by I think 125 or more. And anyway, they look like this. So they're like this. These have already got solution in them, but this is what I'm talking about. And what I'll do next is I will label 12 of these tubes. Three of them will be C1, C2, and C3. That's the no sugar control. Three of them will be S1, S2, and S3. Sucrose, which is table sugar. Three of them will be G1, G2, and G3. Glucose, or dextrose, as it's also known. And three of them will be L1, L2, and L3, which is for lactose, which is milk sugar, a disaccharide sugar. It's the only disaccharide sugar in our, in our cohort. The glucose and the sucrose are monosaccharides. So, once I label the tubes, then I set up the reactions. And what I'm gonna do is, each test tube will get the same things with some variations. You will put five mils of pH five buffer into each tube, all 12 of them. So I've got my pH five buffer and I'm gonna measure out five mils using these little graduated cylinders, which are quite finicky and hard to work with. It's a bit hard to pour into them. So I'm gonna pour not out of this big round bottle, but I'm gonna pour using a, a finer device and I'm gonna fill up to five mils. And I got a little bit too much. Because this is categorical data, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'd like it to be within about a mil. So I got five mils in my beaker, and then that would go into each of these test tubes, right, that I would set up. Next, I would add the sugar. And so the sugars are either no sugar, which is the control, in which case I'll make an addition of more buffer, or sucrose, glucose, or lactose, the three sugars that I already mentioned. The amount of sugar that we're gonna add is 1,000 microliters. We're gonna use the blue pipetters to do that. To use the blue pipetters, we use the blue tips and I'm just gonna grab the blue tip box because I forgot to do that. The blue tip box. 
And what I will do is I will load the blue chip. So I press, I go ahead and grab a blue chip. And then let's say I want to add P, the buffer pH 5 to the controls. I will take my um, bottle of buffer mix and I will pipe that out when I push down to the first stop, draw up the solution and then dispel it into the first control tube. And I would repeat and put one mil, 1,000 microliters, they mean the same thing, into all three of the control tubes. Then I would ditch the tip, I would get a new tip, and I would move to the first sugar solution. So I wanted to do sucrose first. I would take the container of sucrose, which is this, and it's labeled sucrose, and I would pipette 1,000 microliters into each of the S1, S2, and S3 tubes in sequence. When I was done, I would ditch the tip, and then I would repeat that process for the glucose, putting the glucose into those tubes, the G tubes, and the lactose, putting the lactose solution into the tubes labeled L1, L2, and L3. So now in each of those tubes, I have buffer. I have either more buffer as the no sugar control, and that's the C tubes, or I have sucrose or glucose or lactose. And these are the things that we're comparing are the sugar sources. Last but not least, you would need to add the yeast solution. And we're gonna add a thousand microliters of yeast from our pre-activated culture. Because by the time I did all this, that, you know, in the actual lab, that would be fully activated. It would have been sitting there for about 10 or 15 minutes. It would take me that long to label these tubes, to put five mils of buffer in, to put all the sugar solutions in. So then once that was done, I would go back to my activated culture I would stir it really well to make sure the yeast were mixed through and I would look for evidence of bubbling to make sure that the yeast are, you know, were indeed alive and activated. And then what I would do is make sure my pipe header was still set to a thousand and I would load a tip on and I would pipe head up a thousand microliters nice and slow and I would aliquot that into each of those tubes. And then each of the tubes would have all of the contents necessary for these reactions to occur, where we're giving the yeast the opportunity to metabolize that sugar. Now, last but not least, you've got to do actually two more things. One is I want to mix these contents, and I'm going to mix the contents using a vortexer. Let me pull the vortexer over so that you can see that. one of our vortexers in the lab. We have a few. I have to plug this thing in. All right, so here's a vortexer. It's a, it's a mixing device. It's set to the touch setting so that when you push on it, it mixes. I don't really want to vortex my finger. But when I do want to vortex the contents of these tubes, they're glass. So I never hold the tube like this or like this. Hold it from the side about an inch down and I just touch it to the vortexer and that mixes all the solution through. And I can see when it's mixed. I give each of my 12 tubes a mix on the vortexer and then they're ready to incubate. Yeast don't like to be cold, so we're gonna incubate them in a water bath. So we would take our entire rack of tubes here and we would put it in the water bath like that. You can see there's another rack of tubes in this water bath and the water bath is set to 40 degrees C and I've got a thermometer in there monitoring it. The, the water bath gets cold really quickly if the lid's not on. So we have a metal lid that covers the water bath and our tubes are sitting inside. And what we do then is we set a timer for 30 minutes. It turns out this lab actually works pretty well just already by 20 minutes, but we used 30 in lab. So we incubated them for 30 minutes 
and then we took the rack out or took a tube out at a time and we looked for evidence of metabolism as seen by bubbling.